Welcome back to coverage of the Magic World Championship. It is the lower final. Haley Loney alongside Cedric Phillips. And we are going to see the two rogue decks of the tournament do battle to meet Yuta Takahashi in the championship matchup. Cedric, what are you looking forward to in this matchup, my friend, besides some excellent magic? Oh, uh, well, you took it from me because I'm expecting oh, some excellent magic sorry. is what I'm expecting. Um, <laughs> you know, Manny talked about it. Manny, excuse me, talked about it a little bit at the news desk alongside Maria uh, and Riley. And I'll tell you, John Emmanuel DeBrock continues to impress. This deck, when we were taking a look at it, kind of behind the scenes, behind the scenes as a team, we were all kind of like, I'm not sure. You know, not that well positioned. It's not Epiphany. You know, it's it's not Mono Green. I'm not sure it has a good matchup in either spot. It has continued to impress. And Depra coming into this event, if you take a look at his notes and his thoughts on this, he. He said, I don't understand why more people aren't doing this <laughs> because this was powerful in the last format. I think it's powerful in this one again. And maybe the secret's out. Maybe he was right all along because he is one step away from the finals of this event. It's unreal. You know what, Cedric? I think I figured it out. When we were playing it, we were playtesting with all these decks ahead of time. We all gave this a go and we didn't have much success with it. What I'm trying to say is maybe we're just bad because Johnny <laughs> Manuel well. Dupra is so impressive. It doesn't matter what deck he picks up. He just makes everything look like the best deck. Well, there are a few of us that are Dupra. That is to be sure. But the thing that, that really stands out to me about his choice is just the confidence, yep. right? The idea of I think that I've got it right. I feel like I've got it pegged. Maybe I'm missing something, but I'm gonna go with what I know and what I, yeah. me and my team tested with. And I, apparently nobody else is doing this, you know? And that yeah. obviously is the case. He's flying solo with this teamer treasure strategy. And again, it has worked out beautifully for him, but can he get a couple more game and match wins underneath his belt? That's the big question. Well, time will tell. If you're just joining us, this is the lower final. It is best two of three matches, so keep track there above and below the players' names. That tells you how many matches they have won. Fading Hope here on attacks is going to send this token waywards, and uh, Jan Merkel will be able to take a look at the top of the library, courtesy of the scry. There's a smoldering egg. Does he have any interest in that right now? Uh, looks like he's sliding that one to the bottom at this stage of things. His hand of disruption, deluge, demon bolt. Not a bad hand alongside Smoldering Egg. So he's reconsidering if he wants that powerful O4 or not. We did see Smoldering Egg put in a bunch of work up against this deck that John Emmanuel's rocking in the previous matchup. So it's going to stay on top of the library there and uh, just get in the way of these creatures. Preserve that life total a little bit until Merkel is able to go crazy with his epiphanies. Black mana no longer a concern either, so that's nice. Yeah, this... Pretty good hand, honestly, from Dupra. Mm -hmm. Not too scared of much. You know, not a fast acceleration hand here from... Uh, you know, from Dupra's side of things, and from Merkel, he's just kind of chilling. Looks Nothing like to do on turn bolt. four. Let's level yeah. up Ranger class. And here goes Demon Bolt on the Sentinel. So bye bye. Windmill Regent revealed, though. That's a pretty nice find. It's a dragon because Goldspan won't be coming down until a second red source is found. Mm -hmm. The rest was the draw for Merkel. Let's see which way he leans. Is he curious about what's in hand or does he just want to go smoldering egg, hold up Joy Disruption? This is, wow, a couple, couple paths you can go, right? You can start with the egg and then fire off to rest. You can start with the egg, play a pathway, leave up disruption, or you can just play your fourth land and say, I'll just, I'll del lose, yeah. you know? And that's, I'll set up for turns five and beyond, but now we do see, here's the egg, there's the land, mm -hmm. and okay. Now this is a little awkward. If there was a duress there, he would have nabbed the only piece of removal that can deal with the egg right now. Mm -hmm. But does Jean Emmanuel concern himself with the egg right now? Does it look like it, at least initially, as Prosperous Innkeeper? It's going to be the test spell here. Hey, Ranger's class starting to get to work here a little bit now.
I see option to Moonvale Regent, but does he sniff out that Jawari disruption? Yeah, you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now, too, and I'm sure that's what's crossing his mind as well. Is, is it worth it for me to cash in this treasure to get this 4-4 flyer on the battlefield? Not a ton of Jawari disruptions in the deck list, so... <laughs> hmm. I think that treasure is more valuable to him to cast the Goldspan Dragon next turn, so... Yeah, when you know that you're not drawing a land... Well, I, yeah, you have a Seekish Chariot as your draw step. Looks yeah. like, ooh, is this going to be a whole nothing? Let's go yeah. Ooh, a little, little I, bit I, nothing, I then. I can dig it. <laughs> hey, now. Disrupt doors. Double, double disruptions. Uh, one of these might be cast as a land, as we don't have one here for Merkel. Yeah, do you want to play a disruption as a land? Probably need to. You, the al alternative line, as far as lands are concerned, is you could tap out for deluge and try to find a kind of a normal land in quotes that way <laughs> but i think he's just gonna go the duress route and see okay what the heck's going on you're gonna find out right now Jan. in response to the duress dragon's fire is the only target so will be used to get rid of the smoldering egg we see a dryer disruption here to protect it it's not going to resolve no, that's We're not, not going to be able to counter it, so yeah. the rest will take a look, Ski, and see Goldspan and Moonville Regent in hand here for Dupra. Really strong hand now oh, this for is Dupra. So good. It was yeah. you know, kind of a slow start out of the gates. We know the explosiveness that this deck can have with Sentinel and Magda. Magda, excuse me, but um, we're still seeing... As you're going to see, Innkeeper attacker and get a counter, you're still seeing a pretty good draw here. It's just which mm -hmm. threats does he want to deploy and what, and what order? You know, Do you want to start with Chariot? Do you want to start with Regent? If it was going to be Goldspan, it was almost assuredly going to be pre-combat, so I'd be shocked to see that post. But how do you want to sequence these very powerful threats that you now have access to? Yeah, either 4-drop will resolve through a Jabari Disruption. So he's just deciding, is it worth it to cash in one of the treasures now? Now, I'm in favor of the get the Grixis Epiphany deck dead sooner rather than later. Because that's always the goes, plan. Yep, that's always the plan. You don't want them to do, you know, nasty things with Lear or anything like that. Uh -uh. So you do want to pressure them as quickly as possible while still having a good balance of card advantage and being appropriately reactive mm -hmm. uh, with a card like Negate. So the nice thing is that Depra kind of comes at you from a couple of different angles with acceleration and explosiveness, but can also kind of play a little bit of a longer game thanks to thanks to Ranger's class. Now, this Dwyer Disruption, it wouldn't resolve if Jean Emmanuel values this chariot, but it is a way to get rid of the second red source here. Yeah, which 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 may be of interest. Mm. Um, now, ultimately, it's not, so you're going to see a couple of life gain triggers here, but it was something that I think that Dupra was thinking about, at least briefly, before deciding I'm just going to hang on to this disruption, which is never, it feels like, going to get anything. Yeah, this joy disruption is just getting worse the longer the game goes. Pretty sure uh, Debra has sniffed that out. There is the second red source, so it wouldn't have mattered either way. And Goldspan Dragon can get to flapping now. Yeah, Debra with a little bit of a reaffirming head nod there too, which I can certainly understand, which is, you know, when, when Merkel didn't do anything on his turn, he's like, okay, all right, maybe not a lot going on in that hand over there. You know, if it is a memory deluge, you know, so be it, not the end of the world. I'm going gonna, gonna to try to turn up the heat a little bit here. What better way to do it than with a Goldspan Dragon? No argument here. A bunch of damage can come through now. Courtesy of the Dragon, an extra treasure too. Would be able to cast the Moonville Regent on the end step, or on the uh, second main phase. Yeah, this is kind of interesting too now, because how much do you really want to move in when you know that your opponent's deck has a card like burn down the house and some other things you know prismari command stuff like that you, you don't know <clears throat> excuse me if you're to pra what's going on in merkel's hand right now you might feel like you have a pretty good sense of it but you don't know for sure but looks like we're just going to get in the red zone with everything and trigger the chariot yeah. which i'm naturally in favor of oh yeah this attack is it's just chef's kiss because even if there is a burn down the house there's that layer of the hydra hanging out there yeah, you got a layer of the Hydra hanging out. You got Chariot hanging out as a vehicle. So, as you mentioned, even if there is some sort of sweeper style effect, you're still just doing pretty darn good. Now it's just a question <laughs> it's a of, lot of damage. 
yeah, what do you want to copy and what do you want to target with the Rangers class? Those are the questions that DePra is asking himself right now. But, you know, if we were to ask JED how he thinks he's going this, how he thinks this game is going, he's got, I mean, I got to be ahead. Yeah. I got to be I really, mean, really far ahead. This is lethal unless uh, El Merkel finds something here. So Memory okay. Deluge help. Let's see. Fading Does he find anything here? Fading Hope is the kind of card that comes to mind that you're going to need in a spot like this. Did you find it? Did you find it? Did you find it? Oh, it's a Prismari command. Can't cost that. What else is he looking at? Cinderclasm? That doesn't... Uh, kills a 1-1. One, one. That's not enough, though. Yeah, not at this moment, so... Let's see. 5, 9, 10, 11, 12 by my math. It looks like Merkel's gonna be down to 1. And now this is the full extension. Play the dragon. You've got Lair of the Hydra at the ready. Yeah. Chariot's going to go back in the hiding as a vehicle. Copy Cinderclasm go. Nope. Uh, that would have been neat. <laughs> and what can you do here? Against the dragons that are so large, Cinderclasm can deal two. Prismari Command can blow up a chariot. I just don't think, I don't think he has enough to take care of everything. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like it at this stage. So a massive board assembled here, courtesy of Ranger Class. Jan Merkel not finding any interaction here to deal with this board. Dupra's going to do the finger dance. I'm familiar <laughs> with this. This is the this is the counting, and thinking, okay, what the heck can go wrong? What it. You're at, you're at one. That's not very much. What? How do I need to attack around all the removal spells and interaction that you could have? Your fading hopes, your cinderclasms, your Prismari commands. Well, he's decided <laughs> it looks like this. Math is for blockers, and Merkel has none. So that's the easy part. Turn your dude sideways and swing. See what Merkel can find. And he's left the permanence, has to prod that he could wake up, quote unquote, in a Seekers Chariot and Lair of the Hydra back. Doesn't even need them to attack. And Team of Treasures keeps right on rolling, Ailey. Team of Treasures, soggy gruel. Cedric, we've had this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> or as Chat pointed out, it's not soggy, though. It's kind of moderately damp. So, okay. Don't fine. make me use the M word. I don't want to. No, don't do it. Don't make me say moist. Don't, don't say it, no. Okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Blue Gruel doing its thing. Now, I love to see uh, what Pra does with the sideboard here. He basically switches out entirely from this, okay, cool, I have dragon strategy to here, I have wolves now. I'm wondering if he's going to go that route with the Kessig Naturalists. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be bringing in Tracker, Stormseeker, and Disdainful Stroke. Disdainful Strokes for, for a little bit of reactive permission. Stormseeker to be able to turn up the heat a little bit, and then Tracker just kind of just a good card that also can trips and get away from an innkeeper and, and a sentinel. So take down his explosiveness a little bit for a little bit more uh, interaction. Negate, he feels as though it's just a little bit worse than Strokes. So That's probably just a clean 2 2 swap. And then these regions look like they're going out in favor of the Stormseeker. So some minor changing on his side of things is for Merkel, just more removal. Pretty yep. straightforward stuff against a, a very creature heavy and creature based deck. So give me a power word kill, give me a. Soul Shatter, a couple copies of Mind Flayer. That's a really big effect if it gets to stick on the battlefield. And it looks like Merkel getting away from the Epiphany-based actions of the deck, uh, the Singleton Duress, and then one of the Galvanic iterations, which does make sense when you're getting away from the uh, the Epiphany aspect of the strategy. Here we go, game number two in the first match here. In our best of three matches of the lower finals. If you just joined us, thank you so much for being here. You've been with us the entire time. Kudos to you. That's a lot of magic to consume, but I hope you have enjoyed every single minute of it. 16 of the world's best players. Only three remain. We are trying to find our second grand finalist here. Mm -hmm. To go and face Yuza Takahashi. Ooh, what do you think of this hand? Well, for both sides, going to start with Dupra. It's a little reactive, but you know, you do have a two drop. Cherry, it's a very powerful card, but you don't have the kind of explosive draw that your deck is capable of with Sentinel, with Magda, uh, with Innkeeper. You don't have any of that stuff, so it looks like he's going to ship Ooh. that back, maybe looking for that, and has found some of it. 
On the other side of things here for Merkel, that's fine. You know, Iteration and Deluge kind of tie them together, or something to play towards. Galvanic Iteration is a is a high ceiling card if your draw comes together a certain way. So, yeah, I don't think he, I don't think he'd want to send that one back. I, I don't think it's a ten out of ten or anything, but I think it's good enough. <laughs> it's a good start. The Spare Sentinel to kick things off from Jean Emmanuel. The prize side of things, there's a fading hope, so some interaction mm -hmm. for Merkel. It's exactly what he's going to need against the nonsense that Jean Emmanuel will be putting on this board very very soon. A couple of creature lands to start here for Depra. This is one of yeah. the things that's appealing about his strategy. He gets access to Lair and Den of the Bugbear. So as these games kind of drag out a little bit, one thing that he's really going to not be missing or have trouble with is, is ways to attack, you know, <laughs> creatures. Yeah. He's got lands that do it, and he's got plenty of them in hand, too. Scry there for Merkel getting rid of that token permanently. Expressive iteration kick off his third turn. Let's see what he's looking at. He can find a land off of this iteration. The Fading Hope again to hand. Very nice indeed. They have a blue land to go with it. Does not. Has a Haunted Ridge, so did find a land off of Expressive Iteration. Ooh, this could be quite nifty. Prosperous Innkeeper into Reckless Stormseeker, perhaps? Yeah, Alternatively, doesn't... Stormseeker... Nah, I can't do that. Plus, level up Ranger class. Mm, no, we're just gonna... If we do, just want to go the... How, and basically, how much does he want to extend here, right? How explosive yeah. does he want to be? Looks like he's gonna play it a little bit safer just by playing the Stormseeker. Get a little trigger action going here, and let's get busy into the red zone. <laughs> Don't often see Jaspera Sentinel swinging in, but here we are. interesting if we're going to do the Ooh. deluge on the main phase so that you can work yourself around a negate style card or a disdainful stroke you know that that sort of effect you, you don't want to tap out you know I, like i do no. love that but but you do if as, as you take a look at merkel's hand this hand really needs to resolve that card right now for land number five yeah it certainly does and if the sees that okay shields are down let's slam a dragon Oh, hey, Mind Flayer, you get a new friend. Yeah, so there, there's a, I mean, this this is a tough call to make because if you're if you're Merkel, again, land five is critical right now, given how your hand is made up. But so is the ability to interact. Yeah. Uh, with the Fading Hope and maybe in combination with Galvanic Iteration. So he's elected instead to maybe bank on the scrying of Fading Hope to get him home for that fifth lane. Now with four mana available to Merkel, Pra isn't going to slam down this dragon as hastily as he may have. So let's see where he goes from here. Has the option to level up Ranger class. It's going to kick things off though with a Prosperous Innkeeper. Make a treasure. Oh. This is actually kind of neat. Thinking the Galvanic Fading Hope, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, that that's my expectation this turn, is if if he wasn't going to play... Well, he didn't have to play Deluge on his main phase. Obviously, there's some consideration because of Counter mm -hmm. Magic, right? But if he's not doing that, then my assumption is, is that it's going to be Galvanic plus Fading Hope, with the idea of the Scry is going to get me home to land number five and Mind Flare number one. So when do you want to cast this iteration plus Fading Hope? Is it with Prosperous and Keeper on the stack? Is it with the Treasure? creation on the stack is in response to a ranger class activation like all that stuff but we're, we're yeah. gonna see this oh yeah so the single remaining copy of galvanic iteration goes on the stack alongside fading hope and the storm charge slasher will be returned to hand alongside jasper sentinel now assuming i have this correct this is at the end of main phase one Mm -hmm. As opposed to the beginning of combat, I believe. And if that is the case, then we could see a Jaspera Sentinel activation, yeah. float the green, this resolves, and then just basically replay the Sentinel. Yeah. So you don't have to cash in the treasure to do that. Fading Hope Scry puts that top one to the bottom. That means it wasn't a land. That one isn't either, Ailey. Ooh. Yeah. 
I'm a little scared. Land five, ideally entering the battlefield untapped, is critical. Let's see, critical. does he find it? Critical. No. It's cathartic pyre. Icky. All right, let's go deluge. Let's see what we can find. You gotta find some lands, Merkel. Please and thank you. Well, he did finally. Eo, shipwreck and haunted ridge. Pretty good. So I'll say this. Obviously not ideal, right? Because now you're going to get dragoned right to the face. But your Leer <laughs> plan is still kind of online. Leer mm -hmm. plus Fading Hope. That's there. Because um, yeah. he does have three sources of blue mana, six land. Uh, you've also got your Mind Flare plan. Uh, a yeah. Fading Gold Span Dragon. So you... Look, it's not great. You needed to not miss there. Um, but you do have some things to do in the interim. Yeah, still far from over here for Merkel, but the clock is ticking in terms of his life total now the goldspan dragon hits the battlefield mind flare though being able to steal this dragon will be quite nice here but let's see what merkel has in store for Dupra on his next turn now will we see a storm seeker down here i mean you, you got to be a little wary of a burn down the house yeah, I mean, I, I also, but also, it's a question of how much do you care about Burn Down the House when you have a Rangers class going, you have Den of the Bugbear and Lair, and yeah. Lair of the Hydra, too. True. That, that's part of the appeal, again, to those creature lands is, you know, how much do you care? Now, clearly cares enough, he's not going to deploy it, so we keep moseying along. Howard Kill, Cathartic Pyre, Mind Flare. Removal of Plenty here from Merkel also has the iteration in the graveyard if he wants to copy any of these things. Let's see where he goes first. How do we kick off this turn? Three red mana. Looks like we're going for one of the copies of Leer here. Okay, the old Leer plus Fading Hope turn. Yeah. That seems decent. Can protect your creature or bounce a threat. Ranger class is the draw here for Jean Emmanuel. Two, three, four. Um, so if we start with smashing on Lear, cash in two treasures, that's four mana, five, six. You're gonna get six mana total for that. So cash in two treasures, two lands, smash that for four. The response will be fading hope somewhere. Uh, and then you can go to Stormseeker after that, or you float with Sentinel. In combination, you actually you probably float with Prosperous Innkeeper in combination with Goldspan Dragon if the Goldspan Dragon gets targeted by Fading Hope. Basically, what what uh, what Depra and I are probably both doing right now is just going through. I'm going to start with smashing, and then how is how is Merkel yeah. going to respond with his Fading Hope, and then how am I going to respond after that? That's the sequence right now. Yeah, because I think as it stands, John Emmanuel may have the win here. It's just a big thing of can I, can I replay the um, yeah. the dragon or my firing up down the bugbear or you know layer, layer of the hydra or is it stormseeker you know all that stuff because yeah. it is daytime also it's not nighttime which is another thing uh, to work into the equation yeah I mean even so targeting the dragon is probably not the way that Jan Merkel survives I think he needs to go for the sentinel two. because there's two treasures here they, he could just recast the goldspan dragon and that's enough. Yeah, so you just sacrifice that, so that's two, three, four, five, and you attack for four, five, six, seven, trigger Ranger's Class. Yeah, dead. Is that right? Because Ranger's Class, I believe, is on level two, so yeah, you recast, yeah. this is seven. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's that should it. be that should be it if there's a Ranger's Class trigger, and there is. Yep. That's going to be it. Easy as that. Jean Emmanuel picks up the first match here against Jan Merkel, who has a mountain <laughs> to climb now. This deck just, it just goes Cedric. Unbelievable stuff. This is so, you know, I, I know we've talked about this a little bit, both of the news that I can hear in the booth between me, you, Marshall, and Paul, but you know, this deck uh, that DeBras been playing, it's been very much, you know, I got paired against creatures a lot. You know, mono green and mono white. I think I'm fine against Epiphany, but my pairings have been uh, favorable. Well, maybe you just beat Epiphany decks too. How about that? <laughs> maybe you just beat everything. It seems like it. And uh, if his winning ways continue, he may well be our second championship match finalist but we still have two matches possibly to go here 
against Jan Merkel. So we're going to take a very short break and we'll see you directly after this. Jan is also part of our testing team and I think he's a beast. I, I honestly have him up there um, with, with PV and 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 Ely to take the whole the whole thing down. So you know, I think if we if we can bring if we can have a good constructed deck, I think he's going to draft very well and play very well, and he's one of my favorites. I wouldn't define my success in this tournament um, by how well I performed in terms of record, but rather in terms of how I played. I remember Reed Duke going last uh, in his first World Championship and then going on to become one of the best players of all time. And uh, all I want to do is to play, play well and feel like I played well. Well, Depra, you certainly are playing well. Welcome back to the World Championship, everybody. Ailey Loney alongside Cedric Phillips, and we are one match in in our best two out of three here between Jan Merkel and Jean Emmanuel Depra. So let's get right back into the action and see which of these two players is going to join Yuta Takahashi in the finals. Cedric, any predictions for this one, my friend? Well, you know, Jean Emmanuel Depra, I am having a hard time saying no to this deck. I really, really <laughs> am. It continues to perform admirably right now for him. And I say that knowing that we have not seen the top end of his draws yet. We have not seen the Sentinel into Magda into complete nonsense draws yet from him. And that's really telling because that's part of the appeal of this strategy is that one, two punch that can spiral out of control quickly, hasn't even shown up. Gonna kick things off here. Land a piece from both players, Lair the Hydra and Duress here from Merkel to kick things off. He'll take a look ski at Essica's chariot and a Shatter Skull smashing. And the current layout of Jean Emmanuel's hand would allow that powerful artifact to come down on turn three, courtesy of that innkeeper. So that's gonna get taken out. Innkeeper will hit the board and uh, just have to play a Moonville Regent on turn three. You know, not great, but sure. Well, as things currently stand, one draw step away from perhaps another chariot, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Dream big. If you're going to do it, dream big, especially at this stage of the tournament. Both players so close to the Bang. finals. Bang! 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 Remember when you said you're not from the future? Bang! I would like to dispute that. Because come now. 
Good grief. Essica's chariot ripped off the top. Innkeeper gets a couple of furry friends. Dream Let's big! Swing in Remember here for that! One point of damage. Sick draw. <sighs> Could I get your time machine? Access maybe? <laughs> That'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> Now, there is a there is some bad news bears on the other side of things here. For these kitty cats, however, a cinderclasm is poised to take them all out. Cinderclasm, Prismari Command does a nice job of handling the chariot. Fortunately for, for Merkel, does have quite a few answers to this very powerful and problematic artifact. Prosper's Innkeeper, a second one drawn here for, for Depra. Now, where does he want to go? with his turn. What would, which way would you be leaning? So this is the tough spot. This, this is one of my favorite things when you're playing an aggressive strategy, you're playing against a control strategy, is your opponent has four mana up. It's like, okay, how am I going to start this show? And it looks like this question's answered pretty quickly, which is, all right, I'm going to lead out with a Moonveil region. Okay. Gain a little life. Okay. Am I going to fire up? It looks like the answer is yes. And basically, this is saying you better have you better like have a real answer to what I'm doing right now. Otherwise, you know this gets ugly <laughs> yeah. fast. Yep. Otherwise, you are in big trouble indeed. So, Merkel's going to respond here with a Prismari command. It's going to destroy target artifact. So, see ya, chariot, and make himself a treasure token. Get a little bit of ramp action going here. Still going to take five. Yep. Down still a good chunk. Still a good chunk of damage. Mm -hmm. You also have to you also have to concern yourself with Moonveil Region, uh, and everything that that card does four four flyer casting spells drawing you cards all that stuff right still have to worry about the layer of the Hydra that's hiding amongst the lands right now too so it's a really 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 nice draw of the chariot there for Depra to really keep him engaged in this game but you can see Merkel's hand it's a good one too mm -hmm. Epiphany Cinderclasm takes care of those cats along with the Innkeeper Pyre in combination with Cinderclasm can get some work done. Uh, memory deluge if we get into a little bit of a longer game as well. So this one should be a pretty good one in front of us. I think this board is about to die, Cedric. Yeah, this feels like death. Lots of lots of burning hair, courtesy of the cats, and uh, some, know, just... some fried dragon on the side, and just... no damage from the death trigger. <laughs> just draw a gold span dragon. See, I tell you, Cedric! see, put me in the tournament. Just what? put me in the tournament. Go, just just do it. I, I can't even. How? It, unbelievable. Just do that. <laughs> it's so easy. It's so easy. Unbelievable. So it turns out all you need to do to win is have Cedric commentating your matches, friends. And, uh, play, for... uh, uh, and play as well as Depra does, because yes. there's that's a yes. big part of it too. For the low price of, of one million monies, you can hire Cedric to pull <laughs> all your top decks for you. Goodness me! Unbelievable. These are these are some disgusting draws. Yeah. These are some really, really sicko draws. I mean, you just pair a damn strong deck, an excellent player, and some sick top decks. You have a winning recipe here. Well, so I'll, Merkel, I'll say even this. with this excellent hand. <laughs> hey, one good top deck deserves another. Indeed it does. Memory Deluge is going to do a little bit of helping here. Fading Hope doesn't look too bad right now by a little bit of time, which is certainly what Merkel needs. Now, what other card do you want to take? Do you want to go the Smoldering Egg Route? Is a land important in this instance? You do have a couple of copies of, of the Celestis. Mm -hmm. So it looks like Merkel's taking a look at his hand right now. I want to kind of play towards an Epiphany game if I can too. Now, heaven forbid yeah. another Goldspan shows up. Then things get yeah. mighty um, ugly. That's going to be uh, not great here for Merkel. Does have some interaction with Fading Hope available to him. So that's going to save him in a pickle. What does Johnny... Mo okay, what's he top decking this time, huh? Well, a little bit... <laughs> a little bit less intense of a draw step. <laughs> Just a yes bear sentinel, I'll say. Now, it looks like Merkel may have taken the wrong land that that, uh, that Hall entering Battlefield untapped as opposed to... I think he had a blue source that he could have taken there that would eat to be untapped, which means he likely has to cash in the treasure now to... Uh, to bounce the gold band dragon temporarily, which I don't think he's thrilled with because then he can't uh, he can't cast Epiphany unless healing a land. So don't think he's thrilled with that minor mistake right now. Now is this Lair of the Hydra gonna get queued up? Oh yeah. 
I love Hello. it. Maximum damage. Let's just shove everything in here. Force Merkel to deal with it, basically, is what Depra is saying. Make him have it. Yep. Here comes Lethal, sir. How would you like to proceed? I mean, just bounce the lair in this instance, right? Don't give them more treasures? I think you're right on that. I, I think so. Now, what yeah. I like about what Depra did this turn, pretty sure. Almost proof positive he hasn't played land yet. Oh. So in case the lair does get bounced, he can just replay that. And... Yeah. Going for the dragon instead. Okay, so gonna take six here, down to four. Hey, you know what has four power, Cedric? The Goldspan dragon. That's true. So we're okay, so if you're Merkel, where does it start? Does this start with just drawing a land that enters the battlefield untapped to cast Epiphany to make two He's a land. birds? Yeah, they make two birds that could be chump blockers later on. I mean, it, it's going to have to be a little runner-runner action. Perhaps Leer is a good place to be. Leer plus Fading Hope buys you more time that you're looking for. It's not feeling great here. Needs an untapped land and All gets right. it. So that's step a one. start. Step that's one step done. One. Easy peasy. Let's take that off. And those blockers are really important now because those might be able to block to allow the flashback of Memory Deluge. Ooh in order to chain you into the next things that you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Spike so, you know, is found. We're not, seeing the, we're not seeing the crazy, you know, epiphany, copy epiphany stuff that I think a lot of people expect to see from this strategy. Right now, these birds from the epiphany are, like I said, more or less just jump blockers at this stage, as best they can be. Spikefield Hazard is a way to kill something. Granted, it's not the most exciting thing in an in Innkeeper. Celestis has just been hanging out in hand. It's kind of just rotting away there for Merkel. He hasn't found an opportunity to get it down. He's just been, you know, assaulted by these creatures that Depra has been hammering him with. Merkel's thinking about playing this memory deluge right now. A couple of reasons for that. One, counter magic in the opposing strategy. Two, he might really want to go like deluge, find a red source of mana, plus a key spell, Spyfield Hazard, your, your Prosperous Innkeeper, um, chain that way, because you don't know what he's going to say. I hope we can get a good look at these seven cards he's looking at. That'd be great if we can. See if we can switch perspectives here, see what Merkel's looking at, because this is a lot of cards. A bunch of information. Ugh, no red mana. So, so no red mana. Shipwreck plus fading hope might be what he has to take here again because you're just trying to buy time then maybe you get the opportunity to scry with the fading hope yeah maybe you're supposed to just take leer plus power word kill and hope that you get the opportunity to untap i mean that was about the shadow skull smashing so these birds are just dead right birds are toast but I don't think that Merkel is, right? Because no, he doesn't have enough mana to get another creature down yeah. before attacking. Yeah, so for Debra, it might be as simple as just Goldspan Dragon shove with these mm. creatures and then hope it's not too bad on Merkel's turn. But Merkel just resolved a look at seven take two, you know, <laughs> so... You know, that could well be, not that uh, Debra knows, but it could well be two turns in a row that he will just never get to go again. So he's just got to hope that Merkel found absolutely nothing. And uh, let's get to swing in here. Everybody into the red zone. We'll end up taking one here if a block is tendered on two of the creatures. So down to three. Well, <laughs> let's see just how good Lear is, shall we? <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, Lear, you got a lot of work to do, bud. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Man, this deck is just unrelenting. Yeah, I don't think this is a, as powerful as Expressive Iteration is. I'm not sure it's the right time for that. This turn, we could see... We could see three mana for Celestis, play Leer, have Celestis up for Fading Hope. That would also... That, I mean, that helps you get Celestis onto the battlefield if you care about such things. You could also just play Leer, have Fading Hope in your hand, and access to your graveyard. You see the graveyard here with Prismari Command, among other options. 
if he does want to go the expressive iteration route, I'm not entirely sure what the exact card he's looking to find is. But obviously, when you get the opportunity to look at three more cards, it's pretty attractive. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's an option as well for a Leer into Duress, get rid of that Shadow Skull smashing to protect that could, Leer. That could definitely, definitely be a thing, especially when you have a Fading Hope in your hand. Yeah. I think I think Leer is the go-to, but, you know, I'm not sitting in Merkel's seat, and Expressive mm. Iteration is going to be it. And there is a burn down the house. All right, so burn down the house working itself into the equation is a little bit interesting. It looks like that's going to go over to the side because you get to cast this, clean everything up, fading hope as protection. Uh-huh. Okay. Nice. Good old board wipe. One blue mana left over. Yep. So Lair the Hydra won't be getting in for the three points of damage needed to clinch this match here. Or well, this first game here. For well, he can, he can try. He can try, <laughs> for sure. He could say... Are you bluffing a Fading Hope, or do you actually have Fading Hope? One of my the favorite are... sayings in Magic is, make them have it, so let's see. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's in this spot, so this, this is a great spot, right? Because if, if the prod goes for it, he's wrong. Yeah. You bounce his land, you time walk him, you scry, you play Leer, and you're living the dream. The other option is that the pra, who, yeah, he's going to think this through because he could say, I shove and I go for it, I'm right. I feel amazing. If I'm wrong, it's a disaster. But I have yeah. a backup play. I can I can play Moonvale Region and Ranger class. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty good. I'm at 25. I've got time. You know, you don't really have a lot of epiphany <gasps> stuff set up, but we are going for it. Going for it. Here comes Lair of the Hydra. Is he right? We know he's not. So Fading Hope is going to give Merkel one more turn. And now is where things get very, very interesting indeed, as Merkel gets to go leer into whatever the heck he wants. Yeah, and this is this is one of the narratives and things we've been saying all weekend long, right? Part of the appeal of this Grixis Epiphany deck is that leer is incredibly powerful if you get to untap with it. And you see Dupra, his <laughs> head is slumping a little oh. bit because he knows, he knows right now that this powerful card has shown up access to so many cards <sighs> in the graveyard, leading off with Duress, which may be taking the smashing like you mentioned. It's getting bad here. Oh, yeah. Buckle in, friends, because things just got spicy. Merkel resolves Lear, Disciple of the Drowned Celestis, finally hits the board, leaving Fading Hope as a backup here for Merkel. The pra the... is gonna need to do something amazing here. I'm trying here. to think of oh, it. Hey! So normally, normally, that would normally, normally that would be the best draw. <laughs> In a lot of circumstances, that would be the best draw. Yeah. In this particular circumstance with the Celestis and Fading Hope in the graveyard, it's not the best draw. But it does allow him to double spell. Because if he casts the dragon, Fading Hope targets it. That's four mana worth, courtesy of the two treasures. That's a Moonbell mm -hmm. Regent or a Ranger class plus. Well, also, well, so remember that the bounce is going to take place in combat. That's true. Right? So, well, it, I believe it'll take place in combat. Yeah. Well, no, if you do it now. This okay, is so combat. The, okay, if we're, yeah, if we're in combat, yeah, okay, great. So now you only have access to two mana. Do you yeah. want to cash those for a ranger's class? The answer is no. So now mm -hmm. Ailey Merkel has done the thing that Lear wants you to do, which is you've untapped with it. You've got access to two, four, five, six, seven, at least ten mana this turn. <laughs> Seems have good. a blast. Go, go and crazy. I, and, and he's he's gonna. He's gonna hey. have a blast. Has to be aware of the two negates that are in the deck here for Merkel, but I don't think he's going to hesitate to slam this Auron's Epiphany. And now, Merkel, the world is your oyster. Have fun. Oh, this is gross. Look at all the things he can do. Galvanic Iteration, burn down the house, maybe? Maybe? Let's see. Yeah, let's... This, I mean, this we're, we're looking at a bit of a runaway here. Uh, because, you know, Merkel doesn't have to really concern himself with anything like, anything like direct damage. So now, I think, I think you're just on the hunt for, like, another Epiphany. Another Epiphany makes it super, super easy. If you can find it. Oh, and I'm totally lying. Lear says nothing can be countered. So even yeah, if it yeah, wasn't yeah. the game, no, it doesn't no, make yeah, a difference. Yeah, there's no counter spells. You know, yeah, nothing to worry about there at all. It's all systems go. Yep. Burn down the house. Devils. 
Let's make some devils. Yeah, These were and, super good for Merkel so far this weekend. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, the, just the one thing, well, a couple things you have to concern yourself with if you're Merkel, which I can't imagine this will slip through the cracks at all. But, you know, hasty gold span you know about. Cool, mm -hmm. I have fading hope to cover it. Lair of the Hydra, cool, I have something to cover it. So just, you know, make sure nothing, nothing dumb happens, basically. Yep. There's a dragon's fire. As the demon bolt to deal with any dragons, as a galvanic iteration to copy, said demon bolt if two things hit the board here we're gonna go straight to combat and let's see what merkel does with this dragon it's gonna get demon bolted ain't happening we see a dragon's fire here in response it won't resolve on the leer at least but it can get it back to hand yeah this is just this is just so much to handle because basically merkel's playing as though he's got like 9 10 11 cards in hand yeah when you have access to your graveyard you have no maximum hand size. Yeah, you're just doing your thing. And Merkel had to get, well, I mean, both players, really, you know, from both players with some fortunate draw steps. You know, Merkel, Merkel had to survive through that memory deluge turn. Merkel, in a way, had to kind of hope uh, that Lair of the Hydra got fired up mm -hmm. on that one turn as opposed to potentially region plus Rangers class. Is, is that a better turn for the long term? Probably. But there's also a part of you as the pro was kind of weighing through the calculus of, I just go for it, right? Like, <laughs> I just I just go for it. I don't want I don't want to give him the chance to untap and do stuff because what happens if the stuff he untaps and does is better than my Regent and Rangers class? So I go for it. You got one single blue open, just a couple cards in hand. Yeah, that's what an oops here for Jean Emmanuel. Didn't realize mm. that it was combat. So yeah, dragon's that's fire. That's why we've been pointing that out a little bit too. Just where are you in the turn? Are you at the beginning? Yeah. Are you at the, are you at the end of your first main phase? Are you at the beginning of combat? That sort of thing. That's why we've been highlighting that a little bit. Yeah. So a little bit a little bit of a misstep there from Debra. Just shrugs his shoulders. Not much he can do. To be fair, I don't think there's much of a way out for him in this match. As uh, yeah, Merkel just has full control of proceedings now. Yeah, that's brutal. That's brutal. Minor, minor, potentially major mistake there. But I, as you said, I, I think it's unlikely for it to matter because Merkel is so far ahead. So if mm -hmm. for, for Dupra, if he's going to take any comfort away from that mistake at this stage of the tournament, I would say that that mistake is minor in hindsight as Goldsman Dragons just don't stop coming. <laughs> um, What's that, but six he now? Is, he, <laughs> yeah, he is likely to lose this game. So I think he can walk away with the comfort of knowing it's not that big of a mistake. Yeah. Just so many answers available for Merkel with that Leer. Disciple of the Drowned down on the battlefield. These tokens getting the job done here as well for Merkel. And now we're going to see all of the Storm Giants swigging with a team to pick Boom. up the game here for Merkel. All right, we got a fight in our hands, friends. Got a battle. Got a battle. <laughs> That's a great game. Oh, man. Now that great turn, that turn where, where Jean Emmanuel basically shoved everything into the hole or into the uh the lair of the hydra how do you think it would have gone otherwise if he hadn't taken that line oh uh, boy that's tough i mean it, it's tough because you know you, you, he doesn't know his opponent has lair at that point mm -hmm. um so you know if you have a region you have a rangers class and then you also have a layer of the hydra that you can fire up the next turn maybe that's better for you maybe it's not obviously it's going to change what merkel's turn looks like but there's a part of me that it's just kind of like okay I'm, I'm going for the dub because yep. the longer we go, the worse it is. Like, not to yep, say that Regent that and Rangers true. classes are bad cards going long or anything, but it's just in that spot, Dupra kind of came to the conclusion of make you have it. He did. Yep. And yep. it's a calculated risk. Well, let's take a look at the sideboarding decisions here. Very similar, if not exactly the same, that we saw in the first matchup. But in a little come different. The Kessig Naturalists. Yeah, yeah. But a little different. The Naturalists are going to come in this time. And it looks like the Asparis Sentinels, all of them are going to go where only a couple went last time. So mm -hmm. I know that the naturalists and people were wondering what the heck's going on with that card. And the idea here was it's really just to kind of punish control. Yep. You know, because it transforms, a little acceleration, all that jazz. Yeah, control. You know you know how a control player loves to play. Draw, go. Oh, draw, go. <laughs> it's nighttime. Thank you. I now have werewolves. Yeah. That make all my wolves nice and chunky, so... And I think what I saw from a little bit of social media interactions uh, around this card mm -hmm. uh, was basically like it was the best of a bad bunch yeah. of cards to play for that exact scenario. But you know what? Show me some green mana. Okay, let's yeah. see it. Let's see if it's actually going to happen. A little werewolf draw. Yeah, 
let's do it. Look at this. We're now playing werewolves, everybody. Uh, dragons are taking a bit of a backseat. It's all about right. the wolves in the early Team game. Team werewolf strategy. <laughs> oh, gosh. I was about to call them soggy doggies, and I knew I would get kicked off the broadcast if I did, so I didn't Good. say that, Cedric. <laughs> Great job of stopping yourself. Very Thank professional. You. Thank you. Super nice so this... hand here for Depra. On the other side of things, how's it looking? Slow. <laughs> Ew, yeah, that's yeah. kind of awkward. I mean, you got a piece, so you got your mana, mm. you got a piece of interaction, you got your namesake card, but the sideboard of games aren't about your namesake card so much, but it looks like he's going to keep. So for Depra, we got the old 2-3-4 of Naturalist, Stormseeker, uh, you know, Tracker in, in, in some combination and also have a copy of Disdainful Stroke as well. So it's a pretty nice hand here for Depra. Yeah. All right, let's get going, Kessig Naturalist. He's going to hit the board with that adorable little pup he's holding. On the other side of things, though, Cathartic Pyre is going to say, maybe, no thank you, but then it will become night. Yeah, looks like Pyre is just going to be played right now. Get that yeah. thing out of here, which opens up the door for the Storm Seeker if that's the route you want to go. You could also play the Tracker, of course. You got a couple of options here as far as the three mm. drop is concerned. Um, I but they're both good options. Yeah. Looking at the hand from Merkel, I kind of like Stormseeker into Moonvale Regent. Have the Briarbridge Tracker to trigger the Regent if you need to start dumping your hand to draw cards. Oh, the benefits of perfect information. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but you know what's great, Cedric, is if Jean Emmanuel goes that route, he thought about it too, not knowing what's in Merkel's hand. So that's just how damn good he is. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, let's go. Dragging me. Drag it, drag it. Nope, that's Dragon a theme song. Me. I can't sing that. I'll get DMC8. Right, Boom. let's go. Nine points of damage. That's that's a Woo! heavy hitter. That's oh my a goodness me. Yeah, you better, you, yeah, you, you better draw some way to interact. My goodness. Oh, man, when this deck goes off, it's just incredible. Oh, look at it. It's glorious. Now, this is a bit of the awkward spot because if there is any nonsense like an Alrin's Epiphany that's been foretold or the five mana Mind Flayer, the Pra's going to want to hold on to that Disdainful Stroke. So mm -hmm. we won't see we won't see the hand being dumped here to Moonwell region just yet. Can do it, though, with Disdainful Stroke. Oh, this is looking so... He's going to win this game. I this, think is, this, game I, is, I, this game looks very over. I think he's a pretty big favorite to win this game. That's for sure. Let's see. If you're going to Fading Hope, you're probably Fading Hoping the Storm Charge Slasher because that's an attack there for four. Briar Bridge will make a will make a clue, but it won't have haste. Um, so I think if you're Fading Hoping anything, it's just going to be that. But we're going to let the Moon Veil Regent Trigger take place first. Hmm. Oh man, this is such a tough position for Merkel to be in. Has to has to get rid of one of these creatures because mm -hmm. yeah, he's kind of dead if he doesn't. Yeah, Merkel's Merkel's plan right now is, of course, fading hope and a mind flare. That mind flare is going to have a bad time, I think, due to his painful stroke in a little bit here. But let's not get yeah. too far ahead of ourselves. There's the bounce on the storm, uh, the storm chase slasher. Yeah, so the electrified doggo is going to be bounced back to hand. Just the Moonvale regent on the battlefield. There's a leer. Okay. Well, a powerful card is powerful. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, if it's yeah. Good. I don't know if it's good enough right now. I mean, it's a body on the board, and it's another recast of uh, Fading Hope. But is it good enough? Merkle yeah, I think so. Oh, okay, so no, he's going to keep it on top. Okay, so I think the game plan is the following. Uh, you know, this thing resolves. Take my four. Go to four. Play Mind Flayer. Take a thing. Um, and then the next turn I can do Lyra plus Fading Hope or like Epiphany. Like, I just got to make it to six. Yeah. I think my best chance to make it to six is Flare. Yeah, it's not going to happen though. No, it's not going to happen, <laughs> but it's your best uh, chance. Yeah, you just got to kind of chuck it out there and hope for the best. And mm -hmm. it's not going to be good enough here. As no, John Manuel just has to swing. You can't, you can't draw it up much better than that. You, you nope. really can't. Just two, two, three, four, Jeez. two, three, four as far as stuff to do and then play a three with a counter spell up. I mean, if you could, if, if you could script it, that's what you want to do on the play. If you're oh deprived. Yeah, that was so fast. I mean, 
Merkel didn't have a chance there, really. He just never no. got room to breathe, and that is exactly what Dupra needs to do in this matchup if he wants to lock it up here. Yeah, Merkel floods, floods a little bit there. Uh, doesn't have a ton of interaction in that particular game, but Dupra was relentless in that particular game as well. So yeah. if, you're, if you're rooting for Merkel to tie things up here between the two... Oh, he's got a mountain to climb. He does have a mountain to climb, but he is on the play here in game number three, and that's the spot you want to be in against an aggressive base strategy like what Dupra is playing. So... You know, I look, I look for the small things, things to get happy about if you're a player in this spot. And playing playing first in G3, either side yep. would be great. So minor advantage Merkel right now. All righty. Well, let's go, everybody. If you are rooting for Merkel, send energy because he is going to need it. The mountain he needs to climb is protected by werewolves, dwarves, and dragons. So this is going to be a difficult one indeed. But if anyone can do it, it is Jan Merkel. Let's take a look at these opening hands. Cedric, what do you see? Well, Merkel, you're seeing two lands there in Spikefield Hazard, and there was a pathway, then he sent that one back. This one is not much better at all. Deluges, you know, you want one. You don't really love the idea of two. It's expensive, especially when you're being beaten down. Uh, Lear is a great thing to play towards, but you're already sending a card back, and really, if you take a look at it, Lear's got nothing to play with. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a mulligan to five here at all. Uh, and then for Dupra, he was looking at a hand that was really lacking a payoff. Now he has the payoffs. What he's lacking here is the acceleration. But his yeah. hand is still completely fine. We'll see what card he wants to send back. Looks like he's going to go with the region over the chariot. Chariot's more powerful of the two cards anyway. Oh, yeah. Gold, gold spans the ultimate payoff. So here we go. All right, let's kick things off. That is a forest drawn here for Dupra. We'll hope to find a two drop on his next draw step. On the other side of things, oh, that would have been great if they were red mana, so Merkel is going to have to find that. There is a Crag Crown pathway drawn for Dupra. Still not a two drop. But things are going to get underway here slowly but surely. And there right. is the red source, unfortunately, on the back of a spike field hazard, so that comes in tapped. Yeah, but that's okay that it's on the back of a hazard because you weren't in love with casting iteration on that turn anyway, no. even if it was untapped. So the fact that it is ETB tapped is not the end of the world. Also allows you to still keep up Drawari Disruption and cast that card. So in a weird way, if you were going to draw a red source, I'm not saying it's ideal for it to enter the battlefield tap. It's just there's a lack of a punishment there that it is spike field yeah. hazard slash spike field cave. So A-OK -okay here for Merkel. Yeah. Now you can see a bit of a pause here, Jean Emmanuel. Just thinking, all right, if you have it, you have it. Yeah, it ain't happening. Stormseeker on the stack. Droid Disruption's gonna say, no thank you, get out of here, puppy dog. And River Glide Pathway is the draw here for Jan Merkel. Looks like Merkel's going to prioritize Memory Deluge over Expressive Iteration right now by just playing a fourth land. And I think he might just main phase this. Again, there is a question of if you want to main phase this effect. Or if you want to do on your opponent's turn, main phasing it while your opponent is tapped out, lets you play around counter spells, playing the kind of, I'm going to do it on your turn, or I'm just going to leave it for mana. Maybe you have to think about some things uh, if you're Depra. Now Depra is free to do whatever he wants to, but this, all, this also means that Merkel doesn't have to worry about a counter spell. And a couple of goodies there, Smoldering Egg and the Celestis, but here comes Essica's Chariot. No way for Merkel to deal with this as it stands. There is a Mind Flayer to maybe catch a dragon. Yeah, we might see a game here where Merkel is just tapping out a lot, right? Like th yeah. this turn, this turn just could be Lear, GL. Kill it, or, <laughs> kill it or be killed, basically, right? Like that could be yeah. the turn. And that's, that's, I think, a totally fine turn. Maybe a consideration here for Celestis and Egg. Because the longer that sits in hand, the worse it is. There's also the consideration of expressive iteration because my hand's not that great. Mm. You know, I, I could use some help. Mind Flare is not at its best right now. Nope. Yeah, Mind Flare is going to hang out until it can catch a dragon, I'd imagine. You play, you play Lear on this turn. You don't really have a lot going on with it in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. There's a disruption and there's a memory deluge, but there's some high upside to it, it because, again, as we know, if you get the opportunity to untap with it, you're in a pretty friendly position. Uh, but just also just having it on the battlefield could be a boon in a situation like this. So Merkel's got a lot to think about right now because his hand hasn't come together that great with regards to interacting with the creatures that the prop presents. He's made a decision. It's going to be Celestis into Smoldering Egg, keeping up okay. one mana or something yeah. perhaps unknown. Yeah, we're Not of the head, they're from Depra. Let's, yeah, let's bluff it. We're bluffing Fading Hope. You want to queue yeah. up that Chariot? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Dragon time. Oh, yeah. 
Love this. Oh. Love this. It's looking so good here for Depra once again. Merkel has to find something. Has the mind players to deal with the dragon? So that's Play problem one. number one. Dealt Play with. one. Play one way. Play one way. Coming at you. <laughs> no worry. You got fading hope. Good for you. You better have fading hope. <laughs> Now, decision here, does he want to cash in the Prosperous Innkeeper? Is he suspecting to burn down the house? Winner of this Grand Finals. Well, oh. excuse, winner of the Total Match Grand Finals. If, if Merkel's able to win this game, we go on to our third and final match between the two of this best of three matches. Ugh, I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving it. Man, I gotta say, if I'm Yuta Takahashi watching this and Merkel clinches it here, he is on fire. This is going to be one heck of a championship match. Yeah, but I mean, it ain't I, over I, yet. If I'm Takahashi, I might be happy either way. I don't want to get yeah. too far ahead of ourselves. But I mean, I might be happy either way because, you know, I haven't lost yet. So <laughs> it doesn't matter who I play. <laughs> First step here uh, is Hall of the Storm Giants. Not this great. Iteration, this iteration is huge. He needs... He needs some sort of interaction. He needs like a let's pyre, see. a burn down that like just something. Oh, Any way to see. kill creatures. Fingers crossed here for Merkel. Let's see what he's found off the top of the library. Expressive iteration, what you got for us. Oh yep. there we go. Hey -o. There we go. That's what we need to see. Oh, Ways, to yeah. Ways to interact. Ways to interact. You ask for interactive spells, and hey, you have three of them. Now, burn down the house, little awkward, right? Don't have an untapped land to cast it. So, you know, how's, how's Pyre look? How's Fading Hope look? Yeah, this is a bit, bit clunky. I mean, could grab the burn down the house for the following turn, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Could go for the, all right, let's cast a bunch of spells, flip my egg, and just start sniping your board. Yeah, you've seen that so you, approach work. You have two counters on your egg. You take Pyre, it's up to four. You take Hope. You cast, I mean, Pyre plus Hope brings you up to five. You're not seven quite yet. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You gotta let go. Yeah, you got to let go. You got to let, let go of Burn Down the House, but you bounce him just a token. Okay. Bye, kitty cat. Meow. All right, so Cathartic Pyre in the holster here. Orion Merkel. Scrying. That won't kill the dragon, but it can take something out of the equation here, perhaps whatever's targeted by Essica's chariot. Mm-hmm. Scry put Demon Bolt on the bottom. That's not bad. Okay. Please. Math time for the pra. <laughs> I always say math is for blockers, but I've never seen him enter combat without mathing first, and that nah, is the sign of a good player, my friends. Yeah, there's you gotta think about how do I wanna use this storm seeker? What am I doing with Chariot this turn? What am I what am I concerned about in a general sense? There's cards like Demon Bolt, there's Cathartic Pyre, there's other copies of Fading Hope. There's a ton of different things to concern yourself with right now. We'll save all the decks this weekend. This Grixis Epiphany deck has been the one that instills the most fear, I think, just because of all this interaction. It's capable of doing a lot of different things. It's part of the appeal. It's part. That's why four players played this and to a reasonable amount of success, with Merkel being the most successful with the strategy of the four. Now, we're going to work through one rope, it looks like, if you're Depra. Now it's getting to decision-making time. Thoughtful player, yes, but that's to figure out what the thought's going to be now. It's so tempting just to slam and swing, but has to think about these board wipes, has to think about interaction. If only it were always that easy. I oh know, boy. right? Oh just boy. Oh boy. Dump your oh creatures boy. and turn them sideways. Let's swing on in here. Oh boy. Okay, we're in the attack step. Shoving no chariot. Yep. Notable. Keeping chariot back in case of board wipe. Straightforward block. Pyre 2 2. Yep. Almost assuredly. Yeah, let's yep. get that cat out of here. Smoldering Egg gets a couple more counters. Can flip next turn if 
Merkel finds another spell to cast. We have two or more mana. Fading Hope's not going to do it. A lot of other spells will, though. Delu's already in the graveyard. Access to seven mana. Could do it that way. Don't think that's the best option for the turn, but it really depends mm -hmm. on the draw step. Could also go Leer into a two mana spell yep. from the graveyard. And that, and that one's really appealing. The Leer plus turn is yeah. really, really appealing. I guess Ignaturalist is going to join the fray here. Stormseeker just hanging out is looking to sweep in here. And I think that land may have been very important because that's eight yeah. mana now. And yeah. so with access to eight mana, you have Leer plus like Pyre plus Fading Hope in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. If memory yeah. serves, that's also yeah. going to transform. Oh, this. Yeah, this turn is actually going to be real nice. Um, Like if you're Merkle, yeah. you know, you're just kind of a, you know, hopefully you don't have disdainful stroke. OK, cool. <laughs> Looks like you don't. Now yeah. now you see Depra taking a look in the graveyard. So here's where things get fun, right? Because you have Leer. You can play you can play Pyre first. Yep. Kill Naturalist, right? That triggers the egg. That's gonna that's gonna flip into a 4-4. Then you got hope. Mm -hmm. That's gonna bounce something. That's gonna trigger the dragon's trigger to deal two to something else. Mm -hmm. So bye-bye right? kitty so, cat. <laughs> yeah, so you got you got like a really, really good turn. It just depends on how you want to sequence it, because once your Leer got onto the battlefield and there's no stroke. Now you're kind of clear for takeoff on how you want to, you can sequence however you want to. Yeah. Cathartic Pyre, like you mentioned, will certainly take out one of these creatures. Fading Hope can be used in response to attacks or to protect Lear from being killed if the Prof finds any removal spells. Yeah, we're coming on back right now if you're, oh, if yeah. you're Merkle. Uh, and don't forget oh, yeah. about that Mind Flare that's hanging out uh, in the hand as well, because <laughs> that might work itself into the equation as far as taking a gold span, maybe the following turn. Again, depends on what the draw step is here for the pro. A lot could change. Ooh, okay, another I don't chariot. Think, I don't think that that one changes a ton, but let's see. Two? You have, to, you have two treasures, that's four mana. Land for the turn is five. Let's make it ten flat. If you play a chariot, you're going to get two cats. You yep. can play a Storm Seeker. You can turn on the chariot that you just played, give that hates with the Storm Seeker. Other chariot you played, can you turn? Basically, can you turn on both chariots this turn? Well, they are and legendary, so. Oh, yeah, pardon me, pardon me. That's going to make cats. You have one chariot. Yeah, that's a gap by me. Apologies there. But the, the second you chariot might want to just play the first. The cats, the cats that, yeah, that you want yeah, to, to just do this with. So here comes the second chariot. We'll see two cats being created. Essica's chariot can use those to crew. Some extra life, which isn't really a factor at this point, but it certainly does help. And still have the mana available for the Storm Seeker. He's being really careful with this Storm Seeker. Yeah. Like he wants, not, he I, wants to use it to just like I, swing in when he least I, expects it. Yeah, I think yeah, he wants to take him by surprise with it. Yeah. Now, if obviously there's the fading hope, Merkel, uh, sorry, Depra can see that. So will he just go for copying treasures at this point? I wonder. Instead of losing out on the value of the cats. So Stormseeker down on the battlefield going to give Essica's chariot plus one and the fading hope here. So is this the one that gets bounced? You bounce the chariot, you trigger the dragon, you kill you kill, what, you kill the cat? You bounce the chariot, you trigger the dragon, you kill the cat, you block the dragon? With your dragon? Your yeah, I think checks, Ashmouth and... checks the one one? I think Ashmouth is going to get in the way here of the Goldspan Dragon. So let's see. Fading Hope. Yeah, so Ashmouth this... Dragon Trigger kills the cat. Yep. Fading Hope bounces Chariot. You can trade here. I wonder how, I wonder how high he's going to value this Ashmouth Dragon. Because there is... Eh, I don't think there's that much appeal to playing Mind Flayer and taking it, because it's just going to be tapped. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, access to 8 mana. Yeah. 
if there is a trade here that prevents the chariot from coming down but mm. Merkel's gonna take it Essica's chariot's yeah. gonna hit the battlefield once again and now what does he do Merkel needs to find a burn down the house he put one away already <laughs> to process, <laughs> like, to process. Your go. Here it, yeah, here it, I mean it's all pretty good it's all pretty good Okay, all right. Ashmouth Dragon, you can start sniping things down. Let's see what we can find here with this expressive iteration. Man. Ooh. I'm a little su I'm honestly, I'm a little surprised. Okay. I'm Hello. a little surprised that he, that he didn't trade with his dragon. Just a little. Yeah, I am too, but I think he realizes that Ashmouth Dragon is just far too powerful against a wide board. Yeah, I mean, it's really good right now. You know, and it's also protection against a future Goldspan dragon, you know, yeah. with the hopes that he finds removal, so... Okay, this so takes care of Goldspan, yeah. Yep, that takes care of Goldspan and a cat, so you're making crewing the chariot just like a little bit more difficult, kind of. You have a Fading Hope, you have access to Soul Shatter again, and you have access to four mana. Yeah, so Soul Shatter would take care of the that's chariots. Oh, that's a brutal, that's oh. a brutal, that's a brutal miss for Depra. Oh, oh. man. That's not what he wants to see. And his board is just going to get whittled away. This is the power of Lear, Disciple of the Drowned, in conjunction with Ashmouth Dragon, and two spells that he's able to cast from the graveyard. He got to untap with that thing again, huh? Uh-huh. It's not always that This is that looking easy. like Merkel's going to win this one. I think so. Okay, so we're going to get in the Cadillac. Okay. Trigger... No great choice. No. Nope. This is a pretty sick comeback. Oh my goodness me, Soul really Shadow once comeback. again. Yep. This is a really sick comeback. I'm sure there's some quote about don't call it a comeback, but I'm not cool enough to know what the whole thing is, so... That makes, that makes two of us. Here comes the Stormseeker, just... YOLOing in here against Whoa, Lear Disciple of Drown. Lear, There's a good game Lear, from Sean and Lear. And oh. we have a ball game, friends. Unbelievable stuff there from Jan Merkel picks up match number two in this best of three. So we are tied at a match apiece. What an absolutely magnificent performance from Jan Merkel there. Wow. Okay, so that was some brain-breaking stuff there for a moment for both sides. Both sides, a lot of options. Broke my brain with two chariot things. That's not even remotely possible. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> but now that I'm back into the Matrix, um, heck of a comeback from Merkel. Unbelievable. Like, unbelievable comeback with the Smoldering Egg. And really, his hand, not very good to open up the early stages of that game where the Bra's hand was pretty darn good. So now, I know we're going to toss to a break here a second. I got to take a breath and get ready for, somehow these guys got to play a third match? It's probably going to go three games, too. It's if you think our brain is games. fried, I think... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The amount of thinks used in this matchup is just unbelievable. And we have one more match to go, my friends. We still don't have our second finalist yet. Yuji Takahashi is waiting to see if it's going to be Depra. Is it going to be Merkel? We'll find out after this.
Hey everybody, welcome back to coverage of World Championship 27. Maria Bartholdi here at the virtual news desk. Let's take a look at our bracket because yeah, we've got to have a third match here between Jan Merkel and Jean-Emmanuel Dupra who have one match each. Yuta Takahashi waits there in the title match for an opponent. Who is it gonna be? We're gonna find out pretty soon. Mani Davuti and Riley Knight joining me here at the virtual news desk. Man, those first two matches, some incredible magic there. Mani, what stood out for you most of all? Maria, I, I'm like watching and barely watching at the same time. It's like the anxiety is just here and I'm not even playing in the match. Like my champion on the line just clinched that second match and oh my God. <laughs> I know mm. it's nerve wracking for sure. Uh, Riley, how about you? What's the standout moments? Well, I want to come back to what we were talking about before in terms of underestimating Depra here, because this is a deck that I don't think any of us were high on. Like, we came mm -hmm. in talking about this team, at least this gruel splashing blue list, whatever you want to call it, and thinking, geez, I don't know, I don't think it's got the chops. We don't. None of us kind of thought that it was going to be a, have a breakout performance like it is here, but it has shown that it's got what it takes to, uh, to run with the big dogs. Having said that, Epiphany, I mean... Depra identified Epiphany Dex as his tough matchup. He said he wanted to prey on the other aggro decks. He did that in the Swiss. He can't do that in the top four. So will he be able to keep up the pressure? Will he be able to get those aggressive draws that we saw him get to victory in uh, in, in the last match there? I don't know. Depra, he's got a great deck, but the, the power of Grixis is... It's so close, man. I, I just I can't wait to see how the, how the third match goes. Mani, why do you think we were underestimating Dupra and his choice to bring Teamer Treasures this weekend? I think it just looked a little vulnerable. The games that we played, sort of getting a sense for the deck, all felt like we would do our things and then the other deck would answer the board because every deck was packing a ton of removal because they were prepared for mono green. And then the deck would just do nothing. But that just has not been the case. Obviously, Jean-Emmanuel Dupra, a much, much better player than any of us. So certainly, it's the little decisions, right? It's the minute decisions of how do I make the most of every resource I have? And I think that's been a big part of Jean-Emmanuel's success. Absolutely, absolutely. We've seen it come down to those minute decisions so many times in these matchups. The incredible skill of these players cannot be underestimated. Well, it is time for our third match between these two, the deciding match to find out who will go to our finals. Ailey and Cedric are here with the call. Thank you very much, Maria Cedric. It is the final match between these two players. I'm pumped up. Let's jump straight in and see who is going to face Yuta Takahashi. Ooh, what do you think, friend? Who's going to get it? Do I have to pick? Do I have to? You don't have to, but do I, I mean, to? if you pick right, you look smart. All right, well, I've, I've, I've done a nice combination <laughs> of looking smart and dumb during this match, but let's let's find a happy medium. J.E.D. J.E.D. All right. I got to say, I like John Emmanuel. He impresses me every time we see him play. But Dragons. Merkel, Dragons. Com. Yep, Dragons and Dags. I like Dags. Let's jump in here. Take a look at these opening hands. Not too shabby from Sean Emmanuel. A couple of awkward lands. Doesn't have the one-two punch with Jaspera Sentinel into Magda. On the other side of things, two lands: Celestis and a Duress here for Jan Merkel. Finally, gonna see Magda actually potentially do something. It's exciting. <laughs> It's like, well, it's like a key reason that Defrost playing the deck. I mean, she may get Cinderclasm, but let's see what happens here. <laughs> yeah, the emote. Rest, to start off. <laughs> ah, he didn't emote. No, I thought he was gonna. I thought he was gonna. <laughs> oh, he wants to. Look at that. He's smiling. He's like, Mahaha, you didn't find anything. Joke's on you. I'm playing creatures. And now drew a spell in Shadow Skull Smashing that is a land, which is also humorous. That's so funny. <laughs> Something a duress could have sniped, so... All right, well, so now question one is which threat do you lead out on? The mag does the highest upside threat, so we're mm -hmm. gonna start there. Yep. One thing it does give Merkel is information, so he can he can find the the good spot to fire off the Cinderclasm if he needs to. Knows that there is an innkeeper coming potentially next turn, unless unless there's a four drop coming. Yeah. So he's got to worry about uh, Moonville Regent coming down next turn. Or chariot. Yeah, or chariot. <laughs> One unknown card. Foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you just gonna, <laughs> gonna you're just gonna happen. predict it once again, no, chair it off the top? No, no, no. Nope. Not All right. this turn, not this turn, next turn. 
Did you did you use up all your one times? Yeah. Yeah, you did. You got way too many today. It's not fair. Hey, a little less acceleration into nice. here or deluge turns and everything. It's a good start. It's yep. a really good start. Speaking of good starts. Ooh, gold span dragon, nice. And yep. no fading hope to make it go bye bye. So this is gonna swing on in here for five points of damage down to fifteen. Goes Merkel, and this is where Depra wants to be. He wants to get this game over and done with as quick as humanly possible. Yeah, this is th again. This is what's so appealing about the deck, right? Is you get to play, you get to play Goldspan ahead of schedule. You get to play some explosive threats ahead of schedule. Innkeeper's mm -hmm. more or less free right now. You cash in the treasure, you're giving one back. We like free spells. Yeah, and Mer Merkel right now is lacking where the interaction. Is the, where is the blue mana? It's just not here, barring the Celestas. Yeah, he's, he's lacking awkward. blue mana. He's, he's lacking removal spells in a meaningful way right now. It, we saw this in game Ugh. three of, of our last set, where he was able to find some with Memory Deluge, but that's also an issue right now. Yeah, so not a great draw here for Merkel. Up against a pretty imposing board from Jean Emmanuel de Pra. And well, knows thing... that there's still two more dragons to come. Yeah, I mean, one thing you got to remember, playing three colors, as powerful as it is, it's not free. Mm -mm. You know, you, you do have to make concessions to your mana base in order to facilitate that third color, and it doesn't come up, well, it hasn't come up much. I don't want to say it doesn't come up much, but it hasn't come up much. But it's coming up right now for Merkel. Yep. Oh, there is some blue. The second copy of the Celestis gets dumped. Now, does Jean Emmanuel Dupra just start shoving with dragons? Yeah, we, we have seen Dupra be aggressive in these spots. Think things through and just go, I'm going to shove these threats down your yep. throat. <laughs> basically, yes. You and like make, dragons? Because I've happen. got dragons. Yeah, yep. and basically, yeah, this is this is another example of him just going, you, you better have it. Yep. Oh, Whatever it this is. is. This is just nasty. Here comes Prosperous Innkeepers with their dragony pets. Nothing that Merkel can do right now, so he is going to take ten. Go down to six. Uh, excuse me, yes, go down to six. Goodness me. Now, question, do you want to follow up? I don't think you do. No, I think you gotta, just just in case of burn down the house. Yeah. Yes? Just no. Just hang tight. No. Well, it's red. <laughs> it, it is red. It doesn't kill a battlefield, though, unfortunately. Nope. The nice thing, even so, if the dragons did die, there are still those two copies of Lair of the Hydra that can chip in for more damage, if not lethal, if there's a board wipe. Yeah, dead is dead. Yeah. Yep, all right, well, that was pretty easy, game number yeah. one. It's just draw, his draw just didn't come together at all. Uh huh. Now, lack friends, if you would... Oh, sorry, go for it. I was going to say, lack, lack of blue mana, lack of lack of interaction, just lack of it all. It didn't yeah. come together at all. Didn't find anything to deal with creatures no. in that matchup. And it's just going to get worse for him post-board because there's more creatures coming. Now, if you're just joining us, friends, this is the lower final. It is best two out of three matches, so... This is the last time that these two will face each other. One of them is going to go into the championship match to face Yuta Takahashi. So, whoever you're cheering for, you better send them your energy because they are going to need it. Merkel's going to be on the play. We have seen the way that he's sideboarded with the Mind Flayers, the Soul Shatter, and the Power Word Kill. It looks like the same thing here. Duresses and some number of Galvanic iterations out. Looks like two. And this looks like the exact same way that the Pra mm -hmm. sideboarded last match. He's going to do it again. Storm Seekers, Trackers, Naturalists, and Strokes. Two, 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 two. Yes, indeedy. Let's take a look at these hands here. Merkel, as expressive iteration, has all of his colors. That seems okay. Five lands is a bit of a yikes, though, so he's oh, going to send that back, and it got worse, goodness. unfortunately. Goodness, goodness, goodness for Merkel. <sighs> I wonder if he shouldn't have kept that first one. Yeah, I, I think it's fine to send it back. You got higher upside. You're, la you're yeah. lacking any real interaction with the first hand. Now, uh, let's, uh, like if you keep this, if, if you're Merkel and you keep this hand, I think the card you're sending back is Epiphany, but you got to go like runner, runner, yeah. lands to even be able to play. I don't know. I don't think he's keeping this. I, I just have a feeling on the other side of things. The Pra is quite happy. With what happy, he's got here. Ha happy enough. I think if you're Depra, you wish that Disdainful Stroke was um, was just another creature. Yep. Or, so the, like, or an Accelerant or just anything for the second stroke. You you want to have one. Not sure you really need the second one, but I don't think you mulligan the hand. Yeah. 
if you're deprived, if you, oh, excuse me, if you're Merkle, you're looks like he's gonna send back Blood Chiefs. Maybe one of the fives. Maybe Mind Flayer. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Pro seems quite comfy. He doesn't. Pretty, you know, he doesn't pretty want, cheerful. You, you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. Been in spots like this yeah. before, right? Where, okay, I won game one on the. Uh, it's feeling good. On the draw, game two, my opponent gets mull my opponent's mulling into five. If if I lose this game, I get to play first game three. Coming up, me <laughs> and, <laughs> and and draw a really good card on turn two. Oh my <laughs> goodness, Magda Brazen Outlaw, the draw here. It's going to be Kessig Naturalist to start things off, though. Get this day night cycle uh, going. Uh, yeah, Elrond's yeah. Epiphany. It might be nighty nights. It, it might, might be, be nighty night -night nights. Time. Oh no, this is looking terrible for Merkel. And the great thing about this Lord of the Elven World and the Kessig Naturalist is it makes mana for you. So we could see Kessig's Chariot right now. Yep. You play Chariot here, and Merkel misses yep. on a land, or if the yep. land ETB is tapped, we're donezo. It feels like that indeed, so heartbreak here for Merkel. If he doesn't draw a land, it is a land, but it's tapped, so can't get anything down on the battlefield right now. Is at the mercy of this onslaught here from Jean Emmanuel Dupra. Brutal. Oh my goodness me. Brutal. Now we're gonna go Magda. Yeah, tap tap, smack smack. Start copying some treasure tokens, maybe. Maybe. Sure, make some cats. Two, three, four. Yeah, you can copy a treasure if you want. I mean, world's kind of your oyster right now. Yeah. Oh man. This is so brutal for Jan Merkel, but Jean Emmanuel de Pra couldn't have written it better if he mm -mm. did so himself because. This is just exactly where he wants to be at this point. Down to eight is Merkel. There's another Elrond's Epiphany off the top of the library, and that is not going to be enough to get the job done here. Jean Emmanuel Dupra is this close to the championship match against Yusuke Takahashi. It's about one turn away now. Yeah. For, That's a good for, game. For a player who said, I just wanted to play the best I could. The result doesn't matter. I want to walk away from this tournament thinking I played the best that I absolutely could. And he has. And when you play as well as he has, Ailey, you get to play for the championship. Congratulations, Jean-Emmanuel Dupra. You are into the championship match against Yuta Takahashi. And I cannot wait to watch that match, Cedric. It is going to be absolutely incredible. These are the two rogue decks of the championship. <laughs>